Welcome back. This is Defender Chassis. My name's Scott. Today's video is on the proper way to splice chassis tubing. There are various methods that are proposed and are being accepted by tech inspectors across the country. But what is the correct method? Not only with regard to the intent of the rules, but also to keep yourself as safe as possible in the race car. I'm going to show you the method that I use and explain why I feel it is the correct way to splice tubing. The NHRA and IHRA rule books do not give assistance on how tubing repairs are to be made, but the SFI specifications for chassis layouts do state components may be repaired by splicing, patching, clamshelling, etc., according to generally accepted aircraft repair procedures. So what does that mean? Although a phone call to one of the sanctioning body's tech departments might only get you a generic answer, it's my belief that it should reference FAA AC 43.13-1B. This document is published with your tax dollars and is available for around 15 bucks. It goes into great detail about repairing aircraft and specifically chapter four, section five is for welding and brazing. I'll post a link below where you can buy this document and I will also post links to where you can get an electronic copy for free download that you may print at home. In addition, I will also post a link to pictures of the specific paragraphs that I reference in this video. There are two ways detailed in AC 43.13 to splice tubing. One uses an internal sleeve while the other an external sleeve. I typically use the external sleeve method because the internal sleeve method has several challenges. The first challenge is finding a piece of suitable material to make the internal sleeve with. If the tubing you are splicing to is DOM with 120 thousandths wall thickness, you are in good condition and can use a section of tube that is simply a quarter inch smaller in outside diameter. Many times though, you have a cage or a bar made from 134 thousandths wall thickness ERW tubing, which has a weld seam inside and the inside diameter does not lend itself to an existing tube size. You could always turn a slug down on the lathe, but that of course is additional work. In the event you are working on a cage made from chromoly, you likely have 83 thousandths wall thickness tubing, which does not have the weld seam, but the inside diameter also does not lend itself to an available tube size to fabricate an internal sleeve. The second challenge with using the internal sleeve method is creating the proper angle on your existing tube at the splice. Per figure 4-37 in AC 43.13, you are required to cut the tube at the splice point at a 60 degree angle. Although this is not always impossible, it is always challenging. It's a much easier task to utilize the external sleeve method as detailed in figure 4-38. I always use 120 thousandths wall thickness DOM tube that has a quarter inch larger outside diameter than the tubing I'm splicing to create my sleeves. This eliminates the internal seam issue and makes sure to meet the interference requirements of AC 43.13. The only real challenge is the 60 degree cut at each end of the sleeve, but since you are fabricating it loose, it is much easier. Here at Defender Chassis, we have the pleasure of having a horizontal bandsaw that will miter up to 60 degrees. I shot some video earlier of how I fabricate these sleeves. Let's go take a look. So today, we're making external sleeves for inch and 5 eighths roll bar roll cage tubing. The first step is to source your material. What I suggest, what I use, is a tube that has a quarter inch larger OD, or in this case, since we're using inch and 5 eighths roll cage tubing, uh, we're going to end up using inch and seven eighths OD tubing for the splice. Now, once you get your material, you're going to have to figure out what length you need to cut it to so you can start throw it on the bandsaw and, and start uh, making your cuts. I went ahead and done the math for you. It's a little bit of trigonometry. We're not going to go through that here. This isn't a channel for uh, math problems. But the way it works out, if you do a single scarf splice, you're going to end up being ten and a half inches long. 
Now, if you do a, the double scarf splice, as I always do, and what, you, what you're seeing here, then the overall length is going to end up being 7.687 inches or approximately 7 and 11 sixteenths inches. The FAA document does allow in figure 438 for both styles. So you can, you can actually just do a single cut uh, on the end. If you don't have a, the bandsaw like I do, that's probably the easiest way to go. And from there, I would suggest adding a little extra length. Now, these are required to be uh, 7 11 16 and what I've actually done is uh, I actually made these eight and a half inches. That way, it's not so critical when you get to your hole placement for your rosette welds. So, the next thing is to, uh, to drill your rosette welds and your splice will be ready to, to, uh, to, to weld in. Now, I, I've set up on the milling machine to do these and set up a stop and some other things so that I can uh, do these in a, in a sequence since I've got, I'm doing about a half dozen of these today and uh, there's four holes in each so that's about 24 holes. So let me get you set up over there by the milling machine and um, show you how that works. Okay, so here, here we are, here's the setup. Uh, the vise is uh, trammed in. Um, I've already made uh, uh, two or three of these uh, today and uh, got them completed. So it's as simple as uh, taking your, your blank as you, uh, as you get it off of uh, the bandsaw. And we're going to use a square. This is just a carpenter square, but anything that's high enough. And what we're going to do is make sure that, that this plane of the uh, scarf, because you want your rosette to be dead center on line with, with this point. So we're going to make sure that this is perfectly vertical. So what we'll do is get, get it in there and, and push it up solid against this back jaw and then put the square up against it so that um, so that it's vertical. And then tighten the vise. I've already got the machine set up so that it's centered on the tube, which I used this style of a center finder which you simply put it put in the vise, drop down on the tube, and then if you're not centered on the tube, it'll look something like this, and you just move the, the, um, the uh, mill table until, until it's all centered up. And then I moved in the X direction and uh, simply used the point to, uh, you know, this, this doesn't have to be super accurate, until I hit, the, hit a point that I'd marked on the, uh, on the tube. So, the first step is um, a uh, center drill, just so uh, when we go to the other drill bits that they don't walk off of the uh, off the tube. So let's go ahead and get that in there, get it tightened up. The second step will be an intermediate drill bit. I'm not sure what size this is. Looks like maybe uh, somewhere between eighth and three sixteenths. And then the final size will be thirteen. 30 seconds for your rosette and then we'll use a countersink to dress the hole and uh, remove the burrs. Now I have to do that four times for each one of these so let's go ahead and get going and um, see how that works out. Just want enough of a start there so that the next drill bit doesn't walk on the tube. Now I have done this without using this intermediate smaller drill bit and what I've found it will uh, poke its way through I am using a a, uh, a drill bit with a tip that will cut its way through without a pilot hole but what happens is because it's on tubing the bit will start to walk wobble in the hole and when you end when you're finished you don't have a round hole you have a um, you have an oblong hole. So, or actually a three-sided hole is the way it works out. So, um, I mean, it's going to be welded in. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference. It just doesn't look good. And, and um, you know, somebody's going to pay for one of these. They'd like to, sure, look as good as possible. So it's just that simple. Three more to do to finish this one up.
last hole. Now I don't use um, any lubricant on these or any uh, anything to cool the bit. There really isn't enough material here to get the bit very hot. Never really had a had a had a problem. So there you go. Tube splice ready to use. Prep your edges. Prep it to be welded and. Uh, Well, that's it. It's just that simple. If you'd rather buy pre-made sleeves, the Fender chassis has them in stock for both inch and five eighths and inch and three quarter outside diameter tubing. I will provide details in the video description of where you can purchase them. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next project.